What is up, YouTube? Next project for today, Saturday, is finally getting the CB radio and antenna installed. So I decided to go with the President Bill radio because it is incredibly small, super tiny. And I'll show you that when we do the, uh, the unboxing and I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna mount it, I think. Then I've got this also, this Fire Stick antenna with the spring mount. And this is a really cool mount. Now this does require drilling two holes which I wasn't a huge fan of but the finished look of this mount is going to be real slick on the gladiator and I just went with the the two foot fire stick and I'm not entirely sure where the final mount is going to be but I'm thinking if I can get behind this panel somewhere right in here maybe a little lower and it's going to be on this side so this is the driver's side um, I don't want it protruding beyond the roof line for clearance issues and I also don't plan on communicating too long just on a trail with other Jeeps so I'm not really worried about getting you know three five seven mile range so I'm gonna do some experimenting on mount locations obviously and make sure I can get access behind the panels long before I ever think about drilling through the body which again I wasn't a huge fan of doing but there's just really not any good mounting options on these gladiators they make a kit that has a bracket that goes like right here under the hood but to me it just looks horrible it's a terrible looking location i don't like the way the bracket looks sticking out of the hood just not a fan so i'm going to do this a little bit different and try to get some footage of this install stay tuned okay guys small update just wanted to show you how i finally decided i'm going to mount this guy so if you see essentially right here beside the Jeep logo, somewhere around in this area. So these fenders, as you guys know, literally just pop off. They're held in there by these little clips, if you can see those. But, you know, at first I was trying to get behind there and take some needle nose and actually compress these and pop them out. But after watching like countless videos of people, I mean, planning on replacing their fenders, but literally just yank these out, and they pop off and they're designed to do that that way if you get the fender caught you know an obstacle it's not actually going to rip the fender or bend the actual metal part of the fender instead it's just going to pop the flare off now <clears throat> i will tell you i've went ahead and removed all the bolts that you can see under there there's one hiding right there and then there's a couple right here on top and this is after removing the uh, the cowl piece that you see over there on the side. And what that's gonna allow me to do, if I can show you guys with enough light, basically this fender will separate and bear with me and get the light in there. So yeah, so if you can see that, it may not focus properly, but that will give me plenty of access to get my hand behind there and a wrench behind there to tighten down this mount. And then when it's fully collapsed, right here is where I plan on running the coax and it'll tuck nicely under this cowl. So I think this is gonna be the perfect install. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna set up the GoPro and film the rest of this. Stay tuned. Okay guys, hopefully you can still pick this up. So far, so good. This is certainly the most difficult part and the part that I was a little bit uneasy about. I definitely don't wanna drill into the body of the, the JT and screw something up. So planned out what I wanted to do, 
So far, I think the finished product looks awesome. What do you guys think? So it's gonna be a nice, clean installation. It's straight. This doesn't protrude anywhere above the roof line. Should be fine for picking up low, you know, close range CBs. And when you look at where I'm gonna route the wire, there's a perfect channel to run this wire right through there. And then it'll be going into the interior cabin. So let's keep going. No time to stop now, right? Okay, boys and girls, moment of truth. President Bill, let's see what we got. Unboxing. Super tiny CB. Got your instruction manual first. <laughs> this thing is so tiny. Look how little. I'll show you guys here in a minute. This is exactly what I was looking for too. Something that is so small, it can be mounted almost anywhere in a Jeep without needing a CB bar or anything else in these JL and JTs. And the only thing, after doing my research, that I will miss out on, which I have had ample loads of fun in past Jeep builds, as you guys have seen by some of the other videos on the channel, is the beloved PA system. I will not have a PA system on this JT, at least right now, because to do a PA, you have to have a full-blown, full-size CB, and there's just not a good mounting option in the JTs. I'm not gonna do a CB bar, I hate those. I feel like the CB shell, the actual case, doesn't look like it was ever designed to be exposed. They all look like they should be in an enclosure and I don't like the bar run across the top, so I wanted something different. So I set out and I searched, and this is what I came up with. Now, this, you guys are gonna laugh at this, and I'm gonna get all kinds of that's what she said jokes. But look how tiny this thing is. I mean, if you can see this, here's my hand right beside it. So it is literally, basically, if I was gonna compare this to something, it's barely bigger than a typical playing card. So super, super small. And the reviews on this are phenomenal. So I can't wait to get it installed. Real simple installation. It does support an external speaker. And a lot of the reviews, to be quite honest, the speaker's awesome. And I am gonna be mounting it down facing so the speaker should resonate off that front glass and give me enough audio. However, I wanna do this one time. I'm not doing it a second time. I went ahead and got one of those 3.5 millimeter extension cables that's quite long. So while I'm doing the installation, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and run the wire for the external speaker. That way if down the road it's not loud enough, I'll have options for a plan B. Comes with two different mounting brackets. It's got a quick release mounting bracket. And so that's this guy, pretty slick. It just slides in and these little tabs right there, if you can see that, lock it in place or it's just got a low profile traditional bracket. And this is probably what I'll use. I mean, I have zero reason to remove it. I, you know, it's like a hundred dollar CB. If somebody yanked it out of the Jeep, it's not like I'm losing four or $500 on equipment. So uh, probably just do the permanent installation. Got run, one power wire I'll have to run, you know, battery ground, pretty common. And um, I'll probably just run it straight to the, you know, the battery and then ground it on the chassis. You may ground it on the negative terminal. Um, I've had mixed, you know, mixed experiences with where to ground electronics. Um, you know, sometimes the chassis seems to do better, other times the negative terminal is fine. But the point is, it'll always have power. It does have a switch, obviously, to turn it off. So, it'll always have power. And, and then, of course, the, the antenna, and that's it. I've got some nice wire loom that's red and black. So, if you do see any exposed wires, it won't be, you know, got off a <laughs> solid red and black wire. So, let's get to it.
Okay, that's exactly what I thought and what I wanted to test. For those of you who are looking for an answer to this on the little president, um, this is technically the president bill, right? If you connect the external speaker, the internal speaker is disabled, which is actually what you would want. I would hate to have like a weird delay and stereo effect. And when I was reading on the Uniden, the little all-in-one handheld that I was actually considering getting, because it does look pretty sweet, and the last CB I had was in fact the Uniden, there was a lot of reviews that said when you connect the external speaker, well, the Uniden speaker stayed on in, in the handset, which made literally zero sense because that's the whole reason you're connecting external speakers anyway, is to get a better audio you know, piping it through a better speaker, not to extend it. I mean, you're not trying to do like some weird stereo setup. And the problem is there was a delay. Careful. There's metal shavings over here. He doesn't need to be barefoot of all things. Why is he outside with no shoes anyway? Poopy diaper in the trash can. So I am going to go ahead and run the external audio cable, like I said earlier, and I'm tucking it in this wire loom and it's just going to hang out right there at the back of the CB. That way, if I do get it completely installed, the windshield put back up, you know, everything done, and it's just not loud enough, it'll be real easy just to connect up the speaker without having to run any crazy wires and, and redo this process just to run up a three and a half millimeter. So might as well do it once and do it the right way, right? Okay guys, let's do a real quick check-in. Um, I promise the next video that I record will be a first person GoPro head cam mounted video so you guys could literally see everything I'm doing because very quickly realize it doesn't do you much good if I film the install but don't really show you what the hell it is I'm doing, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So let me just try to give you the breakdown. So first and foremost, if I can get this head visor out of the way, I've got it mounted. I personally think it looks great up there, especially, you know, you considering where it is, just barely peeking out below the rear view mirror. Like I said, I've got this nice red and black wire loom that runs right flush against the seal. And, you know, again, you obviously see it. Um, I could, run it inside uh, because if I show you if I get up here so you got a ton of room and basically if you notice on the window see how much of that is blacked out anyway that you won't see so literally there's this one little sensor that you'll see for the adaptive cruise everything else is covered anyway so I could technically drill a hole a big hole right here run all the wires to the inside of this chamber and then come over and up and right here which I may do before I put the window up now that I'm looking at it I don't think it would be that hard um, but the fact is this has to seal so you can't just go up and over you'd have to come through the bottom and fish the wires that way um, certainly doable you know it might hide them just a little bit more in the cab because you wouldn't see this um, you know you would if you looked hard enough you'd see of course the wires going into this chamber and then I could zip tie them down and come up and over and in this way. So I may do that. We'll see. Uh, you know, once everything is said and done, everything else is tucked in across here. Come down. I've got it. You know, obviously fish behind this panel. You can see the wires coming down through here and underneath. Um, went all the way to the back of you know the plastic pieces here. Went under the carpet and then just went right through this hole to get to the underside of the Jeep. And then I'm gonna fish it right back up in the engine bay, wire loom it and connect it to the battery and we'll be done. So, relatively easy install as far as, you know, wire fishing and mounting. I mean, obviously the hardest part was mounting the antenna. I personally think it looks awesome. A lot of people, you know, are, have reservations about drilling into their Jeeps and, you know, obviously I don't like drilling holes that didn't come in a vehicle, however, Again, there's not really a good mount option for the JTs. 
I'm not a fan of the bracket that sticks out of the hood right here. That's one option I've seen. I think it looks horrible. Uh, the only other option I've seen is on the other side where the OEM antenna is. Technically, you can buy, I think Rugged Ridge makes it. It's basically a new mount that allows you to use the CB antenna and it doubles as your FM antenna. But that thing is like $150. To me, I, you know, I'm not paying that just for a mount. And then you got more wires to worry about. You got to add the essentially the splitter or whatever the component is that actually splits the signal just wasn't going to do it and i found this fire stick mount and i really think it looks great because it's flush mount you can see it's got a gasket sealing out any water debris that could go in obviously it's on a you know a spring it's super super tight i mean it's the fender obviously is not a frame so it can flex just a little but with only a two foot antenna even if it got caught on a debris or a tree limb i feel pretty confident that thing's not going to break off because it's got two good bolts behind it um, and that's actually where the antenna itself mounts. So one of them is behind um, essentially an insulator, so it's not touching the frame. And the other one is actually in between the, uh, the bolt and the mount plate for a ground. So I think it looks good. I think it's the, the right height because, again, I didn't want a four or five foot one sticking way above the roof line. I would never be able to get in garages and it would bang everywhere I went. If I ever want to increase this to, say, a three foot, that might work uh, you know if i start having reception issues which i really don't anticipate but literally to change the height of antenna now that it's installed is easy to unscrew it screw a new one on retune it problem solved but for now i'm really pleased with it i think the install is nice and clean almost looks oem in my opinion you know it's right down there by the jeep logo doesn't cover up anything and uh, it's super rigid so yeah so that's the install so far all i got left to do now is fish the wire that you see down there loom it up zip tied up out of the way connected to the battery okay guys another quick update on the progress got everything wired in nice and clean got everything zip tied down added my fuse back in there and then have everything zip tied nice and neat going all the way across and again I decided to come down right down there along the firewall exactly where I mounted the power steps and again this is what she looks like fully installed. It's on. I'm about to do some uh, SWR tuning. All right, guys, it is a done project. So it took about half the morning, probably started on it about nine, got done about noon, about lunchtime. So again, here is the antenna. Apologize for the Jeep being filthy. Um, just haven't had a chance to get it washed, but I really dig the way the antenna turned out. It's got a slight rake forward, which was intentional so that when the wind's blowing against it, it's not blowing back towards the mirror. So looks good. I think the mount really, really is clean on the Jeep. Again, you've got the fender to protect it from getting caught by any obstacle. It's got a nice seal right there, so you're not gonna have to worry about any water or grit, grime getting in there. The antenna screwed on nice. Obviously it's on a spring mounted uh, that way if it does get caught on anything it's not going to rip the thing completely off i think the uh the d location is perfect it's right at the front um like i said earlier in a clip i may decide to add a three foot antenna which would probably be right at the roof line maybe a tiny bit over which wouldn't really interfere with clearances. However, I'm gonna wait, give it a shot, and see what type of reception I get on this thing. Because again, I'm not really under any false pretenses that this thing's gonna go two, three, four, five miles. I mean, you really need a super tall antenna to do that. It really needs to be way above the roof line. I mean, I get all that. Really, the only reason I wanted a CB though is for communication on the trail when there's other Jeepers. So this is the point. Um, I really think it looks clean on the Jeep. It almost looks like OEM, my opinion, right? You got the antenna on the other side. You got an antenna on this side. Super easy. I mean, honestly, once you uh, loosened all the fender bolts and just kind of pulled the fender back just a little bit, popped, you know, part of the flare off, just like I did in an earlier clip, this piece just comes off. That lets you get your hand back there to screw on the nuts. And again, so that's that. And then as far as the interior, you know this like i showed you earlier this is where the wires are run they come in right there go under the carpet go all the way to the back up here and i fished it behind this 
A pillar or B pillar, whatever this is called, fished it behind this guy and then tucked it under the front going all the way across. And the only wires that you're going to see in the cab are right there. And they're wire loomed up with what I consider to be, a, you know, for a wire loom, pretty sexy wire loom, red and black, kind of matches the Jeep and zip tied up so it's not going anywhere. And like I told you guys earlier, I do have right back there, it'll focus. Here we go. So underneath this guy, you can see I've got that three and a half millimeter plug. So I left it right there. So when the time comes to install the speaker, I won't have to redo this and rerun any wires or anything like that. So it's already done. So as far as the mount, and, and again, I mean, I'm under no false perceptions that this is the cleanest mount ever, but certainly because of the size of the CB, I mean, if you look at this thing in relationship to the rear view mirror, and obviously you know how big a rear view is, I mean, it just, to me, is a perfect location. I mean, it's right here, it's easily accessible. It's a super tiny CB. And, you know, again, I can kick it on right here. And one of the things I noticed immediately is probably if the windows were up and the tops were on and literally you know you're going slow on a trail you wouldn't really have any problem hearing it however i'd imagine with doors off top down anything like that going down a highway i don't know why my focus is going nuts but uh, going down a highway it would literally just not be loud enough so that's definitely something that i'm going to have to look into with my speaker my external speaker um autofocus is going crazy but anyhow, um, I really love the, the aesthetic of it. I think it's in the perfect spot. The CB itself is pretty clean. Now I did use an aftermarket um, microphone. So it supports a couple different style mics. And the one I use is a dynamic mic. And this one is made by Road King. Um, I really did not like the OEM mic that came with this. To me, like for, for such a, a nice CB unit, you know, when I say that, I mean like aesthetically, it's got a nice, you know, skin to it. I'm going to take that sticker off. But on the top, it has like uh, louvers for cooling. So, you know, all in all, it's a real clean CB. Then you got to the OEM mic and it just looked like garbage in my opinion. Now, the only thing you lose going this route is the OEM had channel change buttons on the top. But, but you know, how often do you really change the channel once you get on a channel and you're cruising on the trail? I mean, unless you get a bunch of chatter, you don't really need to change a channel anyway. And if I had to do that, what's really cool about this CB, you just press this down or up and it changes channels for you. So again, it's right there in arm's reach should I have to change the channel. But in the meantime, this is a really cool handheld. It's noise canceling. It's one of the best. If you look at the reviews on this sucker on Amazon, it's a dynamic mic. So it's literally designed for you to talk like in it. Like basically your mouth is damn near touching this, but it does a really, really good job of taking out all background noise. So if you are cruising and the top's down, the doors are off and the wind's blowing, people will actually be able to hear you with this. Now, as far as the mount, I'm sure you guys have seen these, but real clean, you know, mount, in my opinion, it gets it up and out of the way. And literally, you know, this thing just clicks, clicks in there. There we go. have to get used to how deep it is. But when it clicks in there, it's, it's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. And, you know, you have a little cable that dangles down. So what I've just done is just loop that right back there and it's out of the way. You can even move it over to get it out of the way of the screen. And that's that, guys. I mean... You know, I would say if I was going to rate this install versus some of the others that I've seen, I would give it to the all-in-one units that you see people that will mount right here, like the Cobra, even the Uniden. You know, they do look clean, just being literally a microphone, but it's really the whole CB, and you just run the wire down there and tuck it behind the glove box. The challenge I have with that is, you know, I'm a big Uniden fan. You know, my past two CBs have actually been Unidens in the JK Sport and the JK Rubicon that I had in the past. But that all-in-one Uniden has got some horrible reviews, you know, and I was looking through it, watching people, you know, do a review on it. It's got a step squelch rather than an adjustable dial squelch, and a lot of people hated that. One of the cool things about this president is it has automatic squelch control, which is something that the reviews gave it, you know, rave ratings on, is not having to mess with the squelch. You just leave it on automatic and the unit does it for you. 
the other thing is you know i really didn't want the cobra you know a lot of people talk about the cobra i personally know a lot of people with that thing but good lord it looks like it's straight out of the 90s you know they haven't updated it and another thing that a lot of people don't like is the power because literally the unit the handheld unit is what is actually doing the transmitting as opposed to the module or the quote brain or whatever you want to call it and a lot of people say you know the power on that thing is just not all that great so i decided to go with a real cb however a very very tiny cb so that i can mount it easily accessible out of the way doesn't interfere with any visibility whatsoever i mean it's just barely below the the actual rear view mirror line and again i think the install is pretty clean you really don't see any wires except right there and those that you do have to see are nice and clean and like i showed you guys in another clip what i may do whenever i finally get my external speaker which i'll definitely be installing i may actually decide to drill a hole right in the bottom of this and run these wires through that hole so literally if you can see where my finger is back there they would be going up through this so you wouldn't have any of this on the side because once you lay the windshield down you can fish that you know right along this groove and i may do that once i get to installing the external speaker but for now i think it's a clean look and so far so good so now i just need to get a uh, I've got an SWR tuner. I was going to tune it. However, I forgot about the jumper cable that you had to have in order to actually do the tuning. I didn't realize you'd actually have to have that in place, like the SWR meter in between the CB and the actual mic. And um, I don't have that. So I'll have to order one of those, wait on it to come in, and then tune the antenna. The good thing is the antenna is tunable. So I'll just wait on that SWR jumper to come in and then get her tuned up and we'll be good to go. So this concludes a review of the CB install. It's a President Bill. The reviews on it are awesome. My sincere apologies about this autofocus. It's driving me batshit crazy right now. I'll probably not record on this, this device anymore and just stick with a GoPro or I've been looking at the Osmo Pocket. I may have to invest in that because this will not focus on what I want it to stay focused on. But anyway, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for more. We're going to build this Gladiator out to the nines. So stay tuned.